Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High. Um, if you'd like to contact me, my contact information is zionsprincess7 at gmail.com. Um, so let's get into this message and this teaching from God. So um, God has already teached about riches on this channel, but this is about be anxious for nothing and and riches as well so not to make haste to be rich right because riches come from god so i'm going to go through the scriptures and i'm going to explain it as i go beautiful people of god and i hope you're doing blessed i hope you're staying prayed up i hope you got your armor on um yeah all that and i hope you're blessed and your children are blessed and your household is blessed well, let's get into it. Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, giving thanks, let your requests be made known to God. So it says, be careful for nothing. You know, I, I can't do that because, no, let your requests be made known unto God, giving thanks. So you leave it in God's hand. And Another scripture of Philippians 4 and 6 is be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Emmanuel. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 22. He that hastes to be rich has an evil eye so this is what god wants to talk about in not being anxious for nothing not even riches it will come because it comes from him and this is what he wants to break down he that had haste to be rich has an evil eye you know get rich quick schemes get rich get quick scams those type of people he that hastes to be rich has an evil eye so people who haste to be rich it's because they have an evil eye. That's not good. We know about in the New Testament, the apostles and Christ talk about an evil eye. And in Proverbs, it talks about he that hastes to be rich has an evil eye. So you're running, running with all these schemes, running with all this evil. To You have an evil eye. And considers not that poverty shall come upon him. So when you haste to be rich, poverty comes upon you when you're in a haste to be rich. But God's going to tell you how to go about riches. Now, Proverbs 28 and 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. So this is God talking about when people make haste to be rich, they have an evil eye. When people make haste to be rich, they're not innocent because they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Right? Some people sold their souls for riches. Some people do a, a lot of abominable works for riches. Right? And it's because they're making haste to be rich. So when they're making haste to be rich, it's because they got an evil eye. And when they make haste to be rich, they won't be innocent in what they're doing. Now, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 4. Labor not to be rich. Seize from your own wisdom. Why, why, would, why would God say? Why would Proverbs 23 and 4 say, labor not to be rich, cease from thy own under cease from thy own wisdom? Well, let me break it down. The first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. So God makes what? God makes poor and God makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. Now Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, yeah? Durable riches and righteousness is with God. 
And we know when God gives you riches and honor, it's because he already blessed you with wisdom and understanding. So when you get your riches, you know what to do with it. And because the blessings of the Lord make rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So Proverbs 10 and 22 the blessings of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. So the riches that you get from God, no sorrows are going to come with it. You're not making haste to get yourself what to, to not be innocent. And you're not making haste. You don't have an evil eye. You're not making haste. You're, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to do, right? Riches and honor are with God. And the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. So we know it's God in in the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord makes poor and he makes rich. And we know in Proverbs, riches and honor are with God. And we know in Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. Now, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verse 21. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. Abide in your labor. Don't labor just to be rich, but abide in your labor. Why? For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on, on the sudden to make a poor man rich. What? If you continue to do your labor, you get your laborer's reward. If you continue diligent in your own labor and in your own business, and be about the Lord's work and be about your own business, minding your own business, being diligent onto your own labor. It's nothing on a sudden to make a poor man rich. It's nothing for God to make you rich because that's what he blesses people who fare him with and people who do his work with and people who are tending to their work and diligent in their work. People who are diligent in their work, they're not focused on others. All right? Because the the blessings of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So continue in your labor. Because it's nothing for a sudden, and at a suddenly for God to make a poor man rich. Now, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labor, there is profit. So why did God tell you to continue in your labor? Abide in thy labor. Why? Because in all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tends only to punery. Now, Psalms chapter 128, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that fares the Lord and walks in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be. And it shall be well with thee. Now Proverbs chapter 10 verse 16. The labor of the righteous tends to life. The, the fruit of the wicked to sin. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. So this is a gift of God. When you enjoy. When you get to drink and enjoy the good of all your labor, it's a gift from God. So why did he tell you to abide in your labor? Because with all your labor, there is profit. And it's nothing for God to make a poor man rich at a suddenly. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. No, which you have shown toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister, you will have your reward. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. That is still work. You get your laborer's reward. God has not forgot your work that you've done for him. He's not forgot your work in your labor of love. And with all labor, there is profit. So even if your labor of love, there's profit. Even in your labor of wis in wisdom, there's profit. Even in your labor of the gospel, teaching and helping God's people and saving a soul, there's profit. Okay? S Isaiah chapter 65, verse 23. 
they shall not labor in vain. Your labor is not in vain because all labor there's profit. Your work for God is not in vain. For your laborer, you will have your reward. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, but they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7. There is that makes himself rich, yet has nothing. You know the people who fake it to make it, who look like they have it, but they don't? There is... There is that makes himself rich, yet has nothing. There is that makes himself poor, yet has great riches. We're going to come back to this because Christ did that. Christ made himself poor, but he had great riches. We're going to get back up to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 I mean, pardon me, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth, so we know riches and wealth come from God. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and has, and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. So this is a labor that happened. The profits of his labor. And... To rejoice in his labor. This is the, the gift of God. Luke chapter 12, verse 21. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Now, the second book of Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That he, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So let's go back up to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7. There is that makes himself rich, yet has nothing. Yet there is that makes himself poor, yet has great riches. Now we're going to go back to, to the second book of Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. This, that's what Christ did, right? For you know that the, that the grace of the Lord Christ, that through he, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Christ died for your sins, and he died through your, his poverty might be rich. That you might be rich. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand. So this is how you can get poor. And he's going to tell you how you can get rich. He that he becomes poor that deals with a slack hand. People that don't like to give. They're slacking giving and they don't they're slack with their hand. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. A man who's diligent in your work abiding in your business God if you look God made me make a teaching about diligence you should watch that video because you will get this message really well but the hand of the diligent makes rich a man you see a man who's diligent in his work he's blessed he's focused on his business he's focused on himself he's focused on his labor and that's a man who will become rich and we know Strong man retain riches. What's another way that man can lose riches? Sleeping around. So can women. Because strong women retain riches. Strong men retain riches. And that's why it tells you do not give your strength onto women. To men. Because when men give their strength onto women, they can't retain riches. It's a punishment from God. Just like women. When they sleep around they can't retain riches it's a punishment from god because strong people when when you sleep around it makes you weak when you sleep with more than one person it makes you weak and you can't retain riches you will lose your riches that's why you see when rich man starts sleeping around with many women they start losing their money even women they get divorced, this and that, and all kinds of crazy stuff is happening with them. Be and they 
you know, child support payments. This one's taking them to court for that and that and this. Because when you sleep around, you're not strong to retain riches. Now let's keep going. Psalms 49 verse 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall not he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. People shouldn't be watching people when their house increase in riches. It's none of their business because nobody can carry that away with them. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 6. Better is the poor that walks in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Walk in your uprightness. Continue in your labor because there's profit for your labor and it's nothing for God at a sudden to turn a poor man rich. And a diligent man in his work will be rich and a strong man will be rich and a strong woman will be rich who are not given all on their strength onto sex. Proverbs tw chapter 21 verse 17. He that loves pleasure, sex is pleasure. He that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. The, it, strong man retain riches. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. For some reason, I didn't put that um, scripture in here, but you can Google it. Strong man retain riches. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17. He that loves pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loves wine and oil shall not be rich. So if they love liquor and oil, you know, shall not be rich. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Let him that steal, stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Why does it tell you if you steal, steal no more, but rather labor? Because with your labor, there's profit from your labor. And with your labor, it's nothing for God to make you rich. Working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. So let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs. You can be laboring in the ministry, helping people, right? There's still reward for your labor. You can labor in love. There's still reward for your labor. You could labor in teaching God's word. There's still reward for your labor. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 24. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it was from the hand of God. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 25 curse be he that takes a reward to slay an innocent person and all the people shall say amen why that is someone who's making haste to be rich if you take in a reward to slay an innocent person but let them labor so they can get their pro because there's profit in labor don't take a reward against the innocent to slay. Don't take a reward to slay an innocent person. Those are the type of things. That's, that's, that's something people do to make haste to be rich. They won't be innocent. Is that an innocent thing? To take a reward to slay an innocent person? Well, that's someone who's making haste to be rich. And this is what this lesson's about. Making haste to be rich. Being anxious for nothing. And God teaching, don't make haste to be rich and be anxious for nothing. Now, Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So whatever you're doing, 
do it to God. Do it for God and not unto men. Like you're trying to appear before men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Let me read this again. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. And, and this is basically the end of this message, beautiful people of God. So God's message is don't make haste to be rich. And know that riches come from him. And it's nothing for him, at, for him at a sudden to make a poor man rich. Because people are doing a little bit too much for riches out here. Too much. Because Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. No, When you make haste to be rich, you sorrows come with it. Hurt comes with it. Because you're not innocent. You get me? And we know with the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verse 7, the Lord makes poor and the Lord makes rich. He brings low and he lifts up. Riches and honor are with God. So a faithful man shall abound with blessings. So if you're a faithful man, you're going to have blessings. And if you're and if you're a faithful man and you're blessed, God will bless you with riches because you're faithful. Re remember um, the lesson what I made where we talked about the when he, pardon me, the lesson about, sorry, I've done so many lessons. <laughs> Where the reward for he, he buried his gift, and that was a faithful man. The, the, the unfaithful man buried his gift, but the faithful man, and then the, the master took away his gift because he buried it and he gave him more talents. The, the book about talents, the lesson about talents, right? Because that man was faithful, he got the other man's talents. He was blessed to take the other man's talent. And the other man was afraid. He was fearful and unbelieving. And he hid his talent, his gift in the earth. Do you remember that teaching? It's a good teaching. I think it's about, it's, it's gifts, talents, and abilities. Yeah, it's that, it's a really good lesson. Um, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessing, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. So don't make haste to be rich. And we know he that haste to be rich has an evil eye and considers not that poverty shall come upon him. So be anxious for nothing, beautiful people of God, because it's nothing for God to make a poor man rich. And it's nothing for God to bless your labors to be rich. So abide in your labor and it's not going on for it's not forgotten by God and it's not going unseen by God. I love you all. Stay blessed and I hope this uplifts you. Take care.